Hey, welcome everyone to yet another episode of MicroPython series. Well, I'll make sure that you all get comfortable in using MicroPython on your ESP32 board for any of your projects. So in this episode, I'm going to teach you how you can send the census data to an MQTT cloud broker, which in our case is io.adafruit.com. Okay, so we'll be sending the uh, temperature new data from our ESP32 board to the Adafruit dashboard and the code will be written completely in Python. So while watching this video, you'll be learning about how you can publish the census data to the Adafruit MQT cloud server. And after that, you'll be learning about how to use timer to call a user defined function to perform a particular task so that, that we'll be learning in this episode. After that, we'll be making a project of sending the DHT11 census data to the Adafruit uh, cloud dashboard via MQTT. And in the end, we'll be making a very interesting project in which you can, you know, send the data from the ESP32 board and you can also receive the data from the Adafruit Cloud dashboard. Okay, so you can control the LED and you can also monitor the census data and everything will be written in single MicroPython script only. So I'll be sharing the script with you as well. So yeah, after watching this video, you'll get a complete knowledge about how to use MQTT in MicroPython for any of your projects. So let's just start with this video after a really short ad. This video is sponsored by LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. Now, if I tell you one very interesting feature of the software, then here in LTM Designer, you can design rigid flex PCB. Now, what is that? So till now, you must have designed the PCB, which has like rigid, like solid PCBs if you are not able to bend. But here in LTM, you can design a PCB in which some of the parts are rigid, solid, and some of the parts are flexible, which can bend and the PCB can, you know, uh, we can bend it in a twofold manner, just like the modern day smartphone, right? So this is a really very interesting, useful and unique feature of the software. Well, you can also try out this and many other unique and interesting features of this designer software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking on the link, you'll get access to the free trial version of this software. So go ahead, try out the free trial version of LTM designer software. Okay, so coming back to this video. So this particular episode is a continuation of its previous episode, which was the sixth episode in which I taught how you can, you know, send the data from the MQT cloud server to your ESP32 board. And now I'm, you know, teaching the reverse uh, thing, which is sending the data from ESP32 to the MQT cloud. So majority, like 80 to 85% of the code is exactly the same that we have used in the previous episode. So previous episode is a must watch if you want to understand the script of this particular uh, episode. Okay. So that being said, let me we just go through the Tony ID and click on the new file. Okay. And here is the script that will be used to send the DHT11 census data to uh, Adafruit MQT Cloud dashboard. And before I start explaining the script, you first need to make the connection of the ESP32 board with the DHT sensor according to this connection diagram. Okay, so after you successfully make the connection, let us go through the script. Okay, now as I said, the 85% of code is exactly the same. So I will quickly go through each of the line and I won't be explaining those lines because it is already explained in the previous episode and I want to keep it as short and as simple as possible. Okay, so first of all, this uh, library, so we have included pin from machine uh, package and we have also included timer this time. So earlier we didn't include timer, but here we are using the timer callback function. So we need to include this timer package as well. After that, imported network just to make sure our ESP32 get connected with the Wi-Fi. Imported time because we'll be using delay in couple of uh, lines. After that, we included UMQT robust package just to make sure our ESP32 board get successfully communicate with uh, or successfully connected with the MQT cloud server. After that, we imported sys because sometimes we need to exit from the script in case it doesn't work. Okay. And after that, this is the new package that we have included as compared to the previous episode, which is DHT. And that is just because we are using the DHT11 sensor. So our target is to send the temperature and humidity data, which is coming from the sensor. Okay. So first of all, we have initialized the sensor, which is connected to the digital pin four of the ESP32. After that, we have initialized the LED, which is not at all required in this particular uh, code. So I'll remove it as of now. Okay, so we have just included one sensor. After that, we have provided the SID name and password of our Wi-Fi router uh, because we need this uh, particular board to get connected to the router to get internet access. After that, this uh, uh, important MQTT credentials, which I have totally discussed in the previous episode, so I won't be taking much of your time to discuss everything again, okay? After that, here we have defined two different feeds, okay? One is a temperature feed and one is the humidity feed. So earlier we have declared the feed for the relays because we want to read the data from coming from the MQTT cloud servers. But in this case, we want to send the data and we need to send the data to two different feeds. Hence, we have defined 
two different feeds one with the id temp and one with the id humidity so we will be ultimately creating this feed inside the adafruit uh, dashboard after going through the script i'll let you know that as well like how to create a new feed after that, we have user defined function called as connect Wi Fi, which is responsible for connecting our, uh, what you can say, ESP32 board to the nearby Wi Fi network or the uh, Wi Fi network whose credentials we have provided. Okay. So here we are calling that function. And after that, here we have declared a variable client, which is, you know, uh, providing all the MQTT credentials to the MQTT client function to make a successful MQTT communication. If it's case it get connected, it's well and good. If it is not connected, it will just print the error and it will stop running the script that we have discussed in the previous episode. Okay. So here now we have uh, defined two feeds. So we have to uh, define the two different formats. One is for temp feed, another is for humidity feed. It is nothing but we are just providing the address of that particular data. So in my case, the address is techiesms slash feeds slash temperature and techiesms slash feeds slash humidity. Okay. You don't need to change anything here. As as we already discussed okay after that uh, here we have defined a new user defined function called as sensor data which we'll be discussing in a couple of minutes after discussing the timer okay so here we are using a timer now the timer part is also covered in one of the episode if i'm not wrong it was episode third of the series so in that episode i've discussed everything about the timers like how many timers are there how to use the timers and stuff like that but in that episode i have discussed a special function which was the lambda function so we can call that lambda function using this timer but here this time I have shown you how you can call a user defined function like any random function how to call using the timer that I have taught here. So first of all here we are using the hardware timer zero so that we have initialized here and after that we have provided a couple of parameters just like uh, we want a timer of 5000 millisecond that means 5 second it should be a periodic timer so every 5 second this timer should call uh, uh, should be called and what to do when this timer reach its limit we just need to call this function which is sense underscore date. Now it's the time to discuss this particular function. So here we have defined a user defined function called a census data or sense underscore data in which what we are doing first of all is we are calling this function sensor dot measure which will ultimately capture the data from the DST11 sensor. After capturing the data, we are splitting the data. So sensor dot temperature will be stored inside the temp variable and sensor dot humidity will be stored inside the humidity variable. Okay, so two different data in two different variable. And after that, we have to use one single line to publish the data to the particular address. Okay, so first of all, the temperature data is sent to the temperature feed, which is this particular address and the humidity data is sent to the humidity feed which is this particular address so by using this single line we can easily publish the data to the MQTT broker okay and after that just for a confirmation i also printed the data inside this terminal window as well so we'll be able to visualize here as well as in the inside the cloud dashboard and ultimately it will say message sent okay and this function or this procedure will be repeated after every five seconds so every five seconds we'll be getting a new data of temperature and humidity so it was was really simple code isn't it so now let us try to uh up no run the script inside the esp32 board let's see if it works or not so i'll quickly save this inside micropython device with the name main.py okay i'll click on the ok button and now if i click on the run button okay it started uh running the script it is connected to the router it got connected to the router and let's see what happens Okay, it says temperature is 24, humidity is 45 and message sent. So it successfully sent the data to the cloud. But let me just stop the script because we are remaining with one thing. We haven't created the feed inside the MQTT broker. So we first need to create the feed. We first need to create the widget and then we'll be able to visualize the data. For that, I'll quickly take you to my Adafruit cloud dashboard. So here is that dashboard. Okay. In my previous episode, I also shown you how to create your dashboard. Okay. So yeah, here is that previous dashboard in which we created four different buttons and now we'll be adding two different widgets. So for that, I'll click on the setting icon, click on create new block. And this time I'll select gauge or gauge here. Okay. Now here I'll create a new feed. First will be of temp T E M P click on. Okay. I'll select temp click on the next step. I'll name the title as uh, temperature minimum value zero maximum 100 it's perfectly fine for a temperature data click on create block and here is the temperature block created similarly i'll create a new block for humidity data 
selecting the same widget and naming it as HUM hum that stands for humidity okay I guess I need to delete some of the feeds so how you can delete the feed let me guide you that uh, click on feeds and click on view all okay so here you can select any of the feed that you want to remove and click on the delete feed button click on delete feeds and your feed will get deleted okay so now again I can go to my dashboard which is micro Python and here I can click on uh, create new block select gauge and type a new feed name as hum it got successfully created I'll select that click on next step give its title as a humidity range is 0 to 100 perfectly fine click on create block and that's it now let's just edit the layout and bring this in the front okay perfectly fine click on save layout and we are done with creating the widgets and creating feeds on MQTT cloud dashboard now let's just again uh, run that script and let's see if we are getting the data here inside the broker or not I'll click on the run button so it says connecting uh, but unfortunately it didn't get connected let me just check my mobile hotspot okay it got connected and uh, Okay, it says temperature uh, temperature 21, humidity 45, and message sent. Now let me take you to the MQT dashboard. And as you can see, the temperature value is 20. So new value is 20, yes. And the humidity value is 43, which is visible here inside the dashboard. And this data will be updated every five seconds. As you can see, it got updated, okay? So yeah, we are able to send the data over internet to a cloud MQT dashboard and that whole script is written in MicroPython. So yeah, it was an amazing uh, project. Like using this particular script, you can make so many IoT projects using MicroPython. Okay, so it is running every five seconds. I'll click on the stop button to stop running the script. Okay, so in the previous episode, we learned how to receive the data from the dashboard. In this episode, we learned how to send the data to the dashboard. Now let me teach you how you can do both the things in one single script. So I do have the script for that as well. So I'll simply open that particular script okay so now let me explain what changes i made here inside the script as compared to the previous script so here along with the sensor i also declared an led variable which is nothing but the pin 2 and i have declared that as output why pin 2 because pin 2 is the pin on which the built-in led is connected with okay so our target is we need to send the sensors data and also we need to control the built-in led using the mqt broker okay so for that i have declared these things again uh, after that what i did here is i have declared three different feeds one is the temperature feed whose address is this one is the humidity feed whose address is this and one is the toggle feed whose address is uh, led one let me just change it here led one okay so this three feed I have declared and the feed name is also declared here as you can see toggle feed is led one temperature is temp and humidity is hum okay so three feeds uh because we need to send data to two feeds and receive data from one feed great then what else we did is we have declared a while loop here that's the infinite loop in which we are running this client dot check message now this particular function is responsible for any of the data coming from the uh, MQTT server side so if in case we receive some data what we are doing is we are calling this callback function called as CB and inside the callback function we are just turning on and off the LED according to the data received okay so we have kind of a club both the codes like the episode 6 code and this current episode code and we got a new script in which we can send and receive the data at the same time so let's just try to run this script as well okay it got connected okay and let's just see if it's sending the data or not okay it's sending the data temperature 20 humidity 43 it is sent 10 20 and 43 and if i click on the led button okay i'm able to uh, see the led let me just turn on the smartphone's camera to make you visualize as well okay so now let me turn on the smartphone's camera okay so here is that led feed and here is the built-in led let me just turn it off and if i turn it on as you can see the built-in led got turned on and i'm also getting the census data here inside the dashboard so i can control this thing and also receive the data at the same time using the single script so yeah that was all about how to use the publish and subscribe method using cloud mqt broker particularly adafruit mqt cloud server which is available for free of cost but up to limited uh what you can say feeds only that we have seen right now okay so yeah using this particular script you can make amazing iot project maybe home automation project maybe sensors data monitoring project anything you can make using this script so do let me know how was this episode according to you also do click the like button if you learned something new from it if you gained some values out of this particular episode so we are already quite uh, you know uh, comfortable with using micropython on our esp32 board but still we are left with so many things so do let me know like what next should i teach inside micropython do let me know your suggestion like what you want to learn next in this micro 
micro python series and i'll definitely make a video for you dev are uh, you lovely guys you lovely subscribers and also uh, if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe because other than this micro python series i am you know coming up with a lot of other interesting projects in the field of iot augmented reality uh, machine learning and stuff like that and yeah that was it about this particular episode i'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next one to explore learn share with me like ASMS.